Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming to tune another video. All right, so uh, I honestly just turned on the camera for no apparent reason. I didn't, once again, looking on YouTube for content and didn't find anything that I really wanted to see, so I figured I'd just run my mouth. One thing I know for sure is I haven't talked about enough variety of teams as of late, man. I look up and down, and all I've been talking about is Kyrie, Nets, KD, Lakers, Kyrie, Nets. I'm like, I don't want to do that, but nevertheless, that's legitimately been the topic of at hand. That's what's been on my mind, so I try my best to just give you what's on my mind, and so when I'm thinking about various things, it's like I go down that particular rabbit hole, but there are other teams. There are a lot of other teams, and um, they deserve some credit, but the thing about it is I'm not really paying as close attention to what's going on in the worldwide NBA right now. I'm kind of focused on what my team is doing, and because we're connected to what the Nets are doing, I'm zeroing in on them, so that's kind of how that's working. It is organic, despite it being th something that everybody's talking about. It's legitimately something I'm paying attention to, because I'm trying to see how soon can we know what our next um, move is going to be. This has everybody waiting around. And so, last thing I heard was um, something similar to what I was talking about earlier between the Indiana Pacers um, and the Suns and, of course, the Nets, where KD would be going to the Suns, the Pacers would be getting Aiton, and then a bunch of picks along with Mikhail Bridges, uh, Miles Turner, would be headed to Brooklyn. I think that's how that went. And then a plethora of other things, of course, to make it make sense. But that was the, the gist of it. I, I don't remember exactly how many picks it was, but it was over three. And then that's how that would work. Now, if that trade can go through, hopefully that would trigger uh, another deal or two that would kind of make everything fall into place so we know what teams can look like. Because that's ultimately what it is. The next domino that would fall would ultimately be whatever decision the Jazz make with Mitchell. Now, the last thing I heard was that the Jazz were planning on building around Mitchell. Unless he asks out, I'd imagine that's going to be the plan. I don't know that he's going to ask out. And to be honest with you, I think his value immediately dilutes as soon as he leaves. Now, as long as he's willing to stay there, I think he's going to be considered a superstar who's home and he's the centerpiece and Rudy's gone. It's his team. If he leaves and he joins somebody else, he's just a guy joining somebody else and he's going to find out, even though he is a star, that 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 his value gets immediately diluted by just the, the presence of other players who could do what he could do. So I suggested back maybe a month and a half ago, when it became clear that they were going to blow the thing up, that uh, he should probably stay there. Uh, but, you know, not long after that, he started... Uh, showing up next to Jimmy Butler and stuff like that. So it started looking like he was ready to go. Obviously, the Jazz did all kinds of stuff, traded Rudy, fired coach, all kinds of stuff going on there. So you have to think they're in full rebuild mode. And um, at this point, you just don't know exactly what the future holds for them and if he wants to be part of it, regardless of what they plan. So it's really up to him. In my mind, obviously, they have him on contract. So I think he should stay. I don't think he should leave. I think he should give him a chance to see what they can do. He's still on par with his own timeline. I mean, unless he has goals of winning the championship every single year for the rest of his career, you do have to kind of find something that's stable and stick with it. And if you see how all these superstars are having trouble moving around and finding winning situations, it's really the teams that are building their own, drafting their own, and ultimately taking the chance with their draft picks to see if they can turn something into something. If they do, do the best to keep it see where the chips fall you can't just cut corners and expect to win it may work for a few but it can't work for all in the presence of 30 teams and and so the nets are finding out it doesn't work for them for the third time or the second time in a row and um you know i think i think the jazz are in a position to where they don't have to take that route they could keep donovan mitchell in place he could stay in place and, and it could work for everybody they could draft the talent they get and then have something organic going forward. And he could he could age gracefully in that situation so long as they make wise decisions. Now, that's key. Are they going to continue to make wise decisions? Well, given the fact that they have Danny Ainge running things, I'm pretty confident they're as good as bad as any. So 
that's why I think he should stay there. If you leave a situation like that, maybe you go somewhere that's a little bit more talented, but if they're not um, in a position to continue to keep that talent coming or in a position to give you a comparable uh, talent around you, you're not going to be happy over time. So I think, I think the Jazz are a sustainable situation for a guy like Donovan Mitchell. He should stay there. So on and so forth. Um, what else am I thinking about? You know, honestly, looking around the NBA, um, I just, I really, wow, still doing the fireworks thing. I understand that there's still a lot of teams out there that are looking for an opportunity to get better but are still afraid to take chances because they don't want to give up on young players. And I just think, and I mentioned this earlier today in the video that I did, that that's probably going to shift very, very soon. I think a lot of guys are holding on to their players, and I think as KD continues to dangle out there, they're going to continue to assess whether or not they want to go forward with some of these young players. For example, our Los Angeles Lakers, my team, we had a young core, and over time we started to realize that it was okay to let go of some of them. But early on, we weren't sure. We weren't quite sure we wanted to give up Lonzo or B.I. or what, what have you. You know what I mean? We weren't really sure. So I think... For example, if the Lakers had a player of that caliber become available and those kids in that space, you had to figure out whether or not you wanted to keep them. I think the Lakers probably would have traded those kids just because there were questions. You know, some teams have definitive superstars. Like, you know, they're going to turn into something you bet not let them go. But other teams have guys where it's like, well, yeah, he was drafted high, but let's see what he's going to turn into. Maybe that kind of thing. Those situations, I think, could be a candidate for letting go of uh, young players and, and maybe taking a chance on KD or, make, or taking a chance on whatever superstar comes about if this happens again. Um, so just keep, the, keep an eye open for that. Uh, the, the Minnesota Timberwolves. I am trying my very best to listen to people who are telling me that I should be more optimistic about the Timberwolves. And the thing about it is this, I don't want to get I don't want it to get lost that I actually like the vision of pairing Carl Anthony Towns with another super tall player. Like I I like that. That's why I like the idea of them drafting Kessler Edwards. I believe his name or Adam Kessler, I forget. I know it's Kessler. But the center that they drafted that they ultimately shipped to Utah I really, really like the idea of them drafting him because I like the idea of having two shot-blocking centers down there uh, with the intent of giving Carl Anthony Towns the ability to pull away from the basket offensively. That is a vision I support. That looks great to me. The problem is, is the player that you chose to, to run alongside him and the price tag attached to that player. And, I, and, that, and that's where it really goes left. So in terms of whether or not I think it could work, well... No, <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't think it could work because of the player they chose to do it with. If they would have chosen Kristaps Porzingis, this works in my opinion. Now, I know it's more so about the defensive end, but in theory for me, it's more so about just being able to deflect, have deflections, get rebounds, and ultimately create space for Carl Towns to play the outside. But you don't want that other player to, too, have spacing issues, and that's exactly what I think Gobert is going to be. He's going to be somebody who doesn't, give you anything offensively and because the game has changed to a spread offense and you know pick and roll pick on this uh what do they call it pick on the patsy or what have you you know now that we're in that era he's been taken advantage of so much in the utah system that i can't really envision him not being taken advantage of in any other system that's where i go wrong i guess i really do legitimately see Rudy Gobert is a player that's not going to be able to stay on the floor in modern in the modern NBA at all. Now, whether or not that translates to them having immediate being an immediate failure, probably not. Because what you're going to have is something that I really appreciate, which is rim protection, easy buckets, second chance points, offensive rebounds. So it should translate to a lot of wins, a whole lot of wins. But. The pace is going to be slow. I think Anthony Edwards and the, the adjustment he's going to have to make to to, to uh, 
adjust to the pace of those two slow centers. One of them slow. Cat ain't actually slow at all. But Rudy Gobert doesn't run the floor like that, man. It's going to get weird. It's going to get awkward. There are going to be times where they're going to be clogging in the paint anyway. Even though the intent is to try to keep Carl out of the paint so he can shoot. Now you're putting Rudy in the paint so the passing lanes are cut off. So it's like it's a lot. I mean the driving lanes rather. It's a lot to consider. And I don't like any of it. Because in my mind, all they really have to do is take advantage of the ability to stretch the floor and continue to shoot the ball over Rudy Gobert. If you can effectively hit threes at a high clip, any team that can do that should should essentially keep him off the floor. (laughs) Have him trying to run out there and guarding three-point shooters and trying to, you know, chase out there is just not a good thing, I don't believe. I don't believe it's a good thing. I think the pace is going to be funny. I think it's awkward. The only thing they're going to really have for going for themselves, in my opinion, is the ability to just get easy, easy, easy tip-ins, easy offensive rebounds, stuff like that. But when you really consider how little Rudy Gobert does offensively, even in the presence of that supposed, supposedly being a strength for your team, when you consider he's one of the worst players for that, it's like, why didn't they just trade for Aiton? You know what I mean? Like, if they have such an emphasis on this on, on defense, I understand he's a defensive player of the year many times over, but that was because he was guarding a different era of basketball, which is what I can't stress enough. It's like, even though Golden State was kicking butt and all of that, it wasn't the way the game is played right now. It wasn't hunting people. You weren't seeing so much pick and roll hunting like you're seeing now. I just don't understand why that was not taken into account you know at all and my thing is like okay well forget that maybe my basketball iq is trash maybe you just look and say you know what there's another way we can win and this is how and then you explain it to me and i get it fine all right it works basketball wise fine but you're trying to tell me that the best thing you could do in regards to building around carl towns and and anthony edwards is trading away all of your future draft picks and bringing back a center a day after paying a center $228 million? You know how difficult it is to build around three max players. And you're gonna, you know, you know you have to max out Anthony Edwards with the rookie max extension that's inevitably coming his way. So why would you put him in a position where his stranglehold cap wise would be to two big guys? One of which you will find out you cannot trade for what it is you traded him for, which is something that I would really really had a problem with when they made the trade it's like look immediately you can't even trade him for half of what you traded him just to get him like immediately and that's one reason why you don't pull the trigger on a trade like that because it's like that price is not the price that's ever going to go for again ever 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 it's like buying a stock at the very top (laughs) the very top and then it drops to the bottom and it never rises to that point you're holding the bag and that's exactly what they signed up for they're holding the bag with Rudy Gobert and I know it maybe they put together a good season okay okay maybe Anthony Edwards averages 23 points a game makes all-star team takes a step forward defensively Rudy Gobert plays 82 games maybe you work out a way for him to um, you know be effectively uh, guarding perimeter players and and, and and just you know find ways to make it work i don't know you win games several years down the road two years three years when all of this is done what you're gonna have is rudy gobert on a very very expensive contract that you can't get rid of carl towns <clears throat> coming up for extension likely again anthony edwards expensive as all hell I don't know what that means for uh, the other players on the team. D'Angelo Russell, he's gone. There's no way you keep him. It's not even possible at this point. Um, you know, McDaniels, one of the most important pieces whose money should definitely be secure will undoubtedly not be there. He he should be he should be thinking about that already. Like they just they they just gave away all the money they had to pay you, unfortunately. We ain't going to even talk about how they gave away Patrick Beverly after he literally brought them an entire culture. I don't, I don't even want to get into that. 
Josh Okogie, a guy that they had, he went to the Suns. I forgot to tell everybody about that on you know, a one-year deal. They never developed him. He was a good defensive player, athletic. It's like you let go of a lot. Vanderbilt let him go. He was an important rebounder for you. And you brought back Rudy Gobert, who I can argue is not going to be a better defender than those players that we're mentioning here for your team in the grand scheme of things, even though he's profiled as a great defender. I just I know better, man. I know better. I know better, and that's why I speak the way that I do. But we're going to watch it play itself out. Maybe they can get enough tip-ins, rebounds. Carl Towns can hit a bunch of threes, stay healthy this year, maybe be able to take a couple extra weeks off if for some reason he has a bad injury because of the presence of Rudy Gobert. Maybe Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert have great games where um, – you know, they can play off one another somehow in ways that I just honestly don't see. He's going to practically have to dunk on Rudy Gobert to get in, the, get in the paint. I mean, it's just... I just don't know what the vision is, man. Like, I'm, I'm not going to pride my statement that I'm a great basketball mind or something like that. I'm not. The majority of my basketball experience comes from watching the game intently for many, many years on, on TV. And watching the game, playing video games, stuff like that. 2K simulations and stuff like that. I played the game a little bit, but not like that. I'm still learning a great deal about things that, that are very, very simple to learn. So I'm, I respect that, and I let everybody know that when I speak. But even in that, I have a great deal of confidence to say that doesn't work. <laughs> like, it doesn't work. Because you depleted the ability to be deep. And I hear people that say, well, they kept their their core pieces. They kept their core pieces. Yes, they've kept their core pieces. But you let go of all your picks, which is your your equity, which, which allows you the ability to, the flexibility is rather what I'm looking for, to be able to do things that improve the team as those players ultimately move on, undoubtedly, because they will be getting out of Minnesota. It's Minnesota. It's not like you're keeping all those guys. You don't have all their money. <laughs> so so as they leave, what you end up finding is that you don't have any picks to replace them to get better. That's what's going to happen. You get this one year where all these guys are together, and then they start plucking away. Especially if you become successful. Look what happened to Golden State. GP2 gone. Auto's gone. You know, it's, it's like you don't get to keep people. They, they have to pay like crazy to keep Wiggins. They have to pay like crazy to keep other guys you know what I'm saying if you have success those players start plucking away and what are you left with what's the core of what it is they actually have Rudy Gobert Anthony Edwards who hasn't been paid and Carl Towns who just got paid no picks and whatever else they can keep whoever decides they don't want to leave Minnesota which is probably nobody that's all they have and Rudy Gobert, as I said, you can't trade that for nothing. He ain't going to be worth nothing at all. You'll find that out soon enough. Just keep watching. So what that means is you, what are you going to have to get rid of? Yeah, one of those two. But don't worry. Because to be honest with you, they both going to want to leave. Because it's Minnesota. And you just did this stupid crap to assure that Minnesota has no flexibility. So not only is it cold Minnesota, but it's cold Minnesota with no flexibility. There's literally no reason to be there. Everybody's saying, I love the fact that the Minnesota was aggressive. They're aggressive. They're finally relevant. No, they're not. They just mortgaged their entire future for something that they cannot use properly for, for a ill-advised basketball fit. A year after the Lakers did the exact same thing with Russell Westbrook. That's what they did. They did a Russell Westbrook move after the Russell Westbrook situation. Now, granted, Rudy is not expected to struggle like Russell. He's not. But you're going to find out you're going to be able to use him just as little in certain cases. And the fact of the matter is, he's not an expiring contract. You got Rudy for a while. Was it three years left, I think? You're paying that. So that's the only good thing about it. He's coming off the books in a couple years. You just hold on. He'll expire. Still won't have nothing. <clears throat> you still you won't have anything. You'll have to resign him, I guess. Who wants to do that? Anyway, hopefully this year Minnesota can find a way to win the entire championship. 
I don't see it. But never mind what I see. What I'm telling you is that is the only window they have. After that, it falls apart from there. If my tea leaves are telling me anything, and I see very clearly in that situation when you're giving away more picks than anybody else has ever given away, yeah, there's no, there's nothing left. You have one year to get this right. After that, you're going to start seeing this thing fall apart. It's inevitable. It's absolutely inevitable. People who don't agree with me, hey, I'd love to be wrong for the sake of Minnesota's fans and their entire franchise, which I don't think can afford another Joe Smith type of situation. And that's exactly what this is. Set them back another seven years. This is sad, man. It's sad. Small markets feel like they have to take chances like this, but in taking chances, they do ill-advised things. This is, you got the right idea. Giving up four picks for a superstar is great. For a guy with four defensive player of the years or three, whatever it is, that's great. All of those different things are great. Nothing's wrong with the profile of what you traded all of that for. The problem is, can he do that for you going forward? And will that even make any sense for what it is you gave up? No and no. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching.